Hi, I'm Pat Gunn, and this is episode 9 of my Let's Play for Fallout 4. Um, since my last episode, I haven't really made any major changes to um, Red Rocket. Things are still feeling kind of like a home, and it's they're sl uh, slowly feeling more like a home. And we have a few things on our agenda for today, but it looks like this guy might want to talk. We could really use your help. I'd be glad to help. We've got a nest of some nasty bugs just... Now, what's really too bad is it'd be a nice... If you can make sure the old workshop there is still... <clears throat> no problem. I'll take care. I hope so. Uh-huh. Okay, so... All this did was ask us to set up a new settlement. Which basically means clearing an area and... Uh, and then reporting back. And then you get a settlement and you get a few settlers uh, there uh, immediately. We're going to do that, but also on the agenda for today, we want to return to the water treatment plant and deal with the pesky robot uh, problem. And I think we were thinking about going after Hubris uh, Comics too. So this is going to be a pretty busy uh, go. But first, looks like the settlement that we were asked to clear, it's not terribly far away. And we've already been to Covenant, or we've been near Covenant, so let's just go take care of that real quick. So it looks like it's just a little bit east. We have our good old trusty rifle ready. Now, Covenants, it is an interesting place. We're not going to go in there yet. Probably not in this Let's Play. But in the future Let's Play, we'll definitely do that. Covenant has a interesting purpose. It's a purposed community, and you can kind of see that it's like a gated community as well. It has a strong sense of purpose and some quests associated with it. Now, Taffington Boathouse, it's actually super, super close and that we're already here. Like, it's almost within sight, just not quite a covenant. But this place, as you can see, has a bug problem. So let's... Let's take care of that. Now these guys have a really, really nasty melee attack. Whoa. Ugh. Well, just... I managed to slip mostly away. It looks like there's got to be some mines, and there is another blood bug. You might have noticed since the last time I used this weapon, I, or at least I think it's been a while since I've done it, but I've modified it to be, uh... silenced. It's super useful to have a silenced weapon. It greatly reduces the range. But given the way that I use this, I don't use this weapon for sniping, so it really didn't lose too much. It's basically just meant to be a very rapid-fire, short-range weapon. But if I can get up close and fire a silenced weapon, then there's a decent chance that I won't immediately draw the attention of everything. Yeah, there's some limits, because I stu still do need to get close, and that somewhat limits the usefulness of, um, of a silenced weapon, but... Not entirely. Oh, looks like Kim McCready has got my back and he's providing some cover fire. And I can... Ooh, these guys do not take a lot of damage from this weapon. Uh, let's see if I have something better. Yeah, combat shotgun. I, I replaced my old shotgun with the combat one. And... The, the nice thing about this is it actually does quite a lot of damage, particularly if you're if you get super up close and personal. Now you can see from the combat marker that there's something right above me. The upstairs upstairs of this place is kind of terrifyingly. There we go. But but fortunately, I am prepared. I have a good melee weapon. So it's basically, although they can do quite a lot of damage. <clears throat> so I think we've 
probably taken care of the boathouse. And we haven't picked up too much, so it's not really ruined our carry capacity. Yes. And there's a steamer trunk. Steamer trunks are, are often used by the game just to reward you with stuff, and usually they have some leveled loot. That's it. Maybe this is enough that I should sw swing by. Well, no. Uh, this is a settlement. It makes sense for me to just drop stuff off here. Ooh. Well, that clearly didn't work out too well for Mary Sutton. Not quite sure if I should know who that is or not. Unfortunately, I don't know if we will shove that out the window, and we don't really like having corpses around our settlement, so we're going to carry this thing up. Raiders check in, they don't check out. Well, uh, where did that body go? Well, that wasn't meaning that body, but... Hmm. Oh, well, okay. And I actually moved her into a place where I don't have a way to get to it. That's annoying. Okay, well, we have successfully... Uh, we, we have some weapons and armor that we're not going to drop off here, but we dropped off our stuff, and that is good enough. So next, we're going to go for the water treatment plant. Now, in our last Let's Play, we started in on this, but it's just... The loot from this place was so good that it out, it exceeded our carry capacity. We didn't even get that far into it. Hoping... Okay, it looks like there's a rad storm right now. But... There's nothing uh, showing up in my targeting. Uh, let's try and avoid getting too irradiated. Let's just kind of make a dash for the door. And here, this is the pot that super mutants apparently cook stuff in. <clears throat> so, off we go. Yeah, there was another um, clearing of a place that's like this that I, I keep on getting this uh, this place mixed up with, uh, with. But... So, that, that led up to the roof, but we actually are going down, not up. So, down we go. Let's see if McCready will teleport into the elevator with us if we keep doing this trick. No, not this time. I wonder if Bethesda patched that bug. At least I'm, I'm gonna call it a bug. We need to finish looting this room. Okay. It's interesting thing, uh, to think about what this place would have felt like before the war. Oh, yeah, I remember last time McCready ended up, uh... Okay, so when we look here, what we see is a room, or maybe an attic or something, that is completely full of water. That's what it looks like. And some adhesive, which is always welcome. And there's a pump control switch. Let's see what is going on here. That is draining the room. But we can see there's some enemy markers in there, so... And there it is. There are some critters that do not like having their own brain. Right now, they have no way to open the door. I don't remember if... No, this is actually... It's a very clean glass window, so we can't actually hit them through it. A little bit annoying. If we're very careful, then we can actually do this in one of the cheapest ways imaginable. You sneak forward, drop off a mine, and then once they see us, they're going to come for us, but we can just close and lock the door behind us every time. Of course, if they don't see us, then maybe we don't need to worry about that so much. Hmm. If this is a uh, halfway up into the room that we were in before. Looks like it. And that just might have been uh, 
to the mine that I left. Yeah, we, we were in this room before. We did not adequately loot even the entryway, but we proceeded beyond it. Fortunately, my lips don't know how to handle doors, so we're still doing okay. There's the Meyer Lurk. It looks like it's limping, so we managed to do some good damage to it. Let's slip on by. And it has seen us, but... Again, this one is crippled, so there's not a lot it can do to us. Yeah, you can see its left legs are, are messed up. Empty uh, bar there. Its right legs are fine. Just for the uh, for the lols. My lurks are kind of annoying, I suppose, because they uh, they have really pretty good armor, uh, just built-in natural armor. Just gonna keep going. What's, what's, what is that water in this in there? That's my alert. Okay. <clears throat> but it is not clever enough to know how to get at us. Sweet. So, clearly this is a game of drain the swamp. We could close that door behind us, but I don't remember if there's any or more foes in here. Yeah, it looks like that door locks. This door... Yeah, we weren't, I think fire alerts can open regular doors. They just can't open the power doors. It's interesting tactically. Sweet. But it means that, like, now that this is unlocked, they're going to be able to go through it, I think. And we're not really going to be able to stop them. Yeah, it's an interesting game mechanic. Uh, oh, so actually there's no reason for them to be in here, and we just got a small amount of additional loot from coming in here. N nothing quest-related, nothing particularly stunningly interesting. Okay, so if we lock the door here, let's drop off the mine first. I think I've lost track of McCready. I will just trust that he is off somewhere doing something sensible. Uh oh. Yeah, let's close that. And actually go retrieve our mine because we have now have a better use for it over here. Oh, there's McCready. Okay, he is probably just teleported to join us. We just drop this guy up here. Activate the pump control switch. And that's the door. Sorry, no greedy. Uh, in real life, I wouldn't do that to a person. That would be a major douche move. Okay. Oh, we got both of its legs, so there's not a lot we can, it can do to us, and it leaves it. Uh, the thing about Mylarch is, even though they have really uh, good built-in armor, Opening fire. I was hoping that I could get this this one's legs too, but. I'm gonna see. I've always been curious. Actually, maybe I'll, I'll do this. You won't often see me making great use of uh, explosives. Yeah, that's at least very cool looking. Oh, McCready, what are you doing? Well, he's being an idiot. Oh, more stuff. Cool. I guess if he's well-armed enough, then it doesn't really hurt too much uh, to, 
to go with that much gusto, but it's certainly more gusto than than I would do, like just hopping right in. You can kind of see that there used to be a platform there. This shouldn't take long. Okay. So here... If you get their, their head or their torso, then you're doing okay. But the problem is if you get their shell, their shell has really quite good uh, armor. Oh shoot, oh shoot, oh shoot. Oh, sweet. And they do not have really any appreciable ability to jump. So if you can manage to get to some place like this, then you are golden for a while at least. So I believe that the next objective is over there. Now, the thing is, if they can't get to you, then they usually will go high, which is probably a pretty smart thing, tactically. Because usually that means that you're gonna... You will probably come back. But, uh, whoop. There they are. Okay. Let's see if I can get this one's head. Need to rearm. Whoa. Sweet. Great when you actually have. Oh, but. Yeah, that's... Oh, so it looks like I've done a little bit of work on my own. Unfortunately, that thing I think is is not trying to avoid me. Is perfectly happy to hit me or or the Meyer Lurch. So we're gonna have to take care of it. And there we go with another control switch. Oh, or did we already do this? Maybe we didn't. I guess the thing about this is that if you were actually opening this place, you would probably prefer to just have it automatically decide when to start pumping. It doesn't really make tons of sense for it to, uh, oh, for it to be a manually operated tool. Where did that guy go? There it is. Oh, it's going after, oh, I did not even see you. Switch to a more super weapon. Okay, there's another one I think. I can't quite see it. Oh, there it is. Yeah, but the combat shotgun is amazing in close quarters. Particularly, again, you have to know how, how to dodge in Twilight, and it's not really the same as dodging in most other games. In a lot of ways, it's just that the, the physics in Fallout is surprisingly a little bit better. Okay, we have 214 ammo. We're still doing pretty well. Uh, okay, for some reason, that, that thing is not firing at us, which I am happy about. Just a little bit surprising. And again, you will remember that I got perk that makes you immune to the radiation that is present in pretty much all water in the game. And it also lets you breathe underwater. A little bit silly, but eh. Turn on the pumps here. Then I just have to swing over there and turn the main pump on. And we are rolling. not see tons of Meyer Lurks doing anything here. Okay. Subre Le Why are you 
Well, anyhow, I'm not going to complain. It's just it's a little bit weird that it's not firing. This place still doesn't feel clean in any sense. I would be a little wary of getting water pumped out of it, but... This is the way that this, this quest is structured. And maybe it's uh, better than it was before. Okay, so... I think we, you might remember that before... Come on, McCready. Come in with me this time. You might remember that there was an unpowered elevator. And, uh... It is no longer unpowered. Surface. Okay, so out we go, and we're back near the front of uh, of this place. So we can swing back to Grey Garden. and report that our activities have been successful. Bring me some immune fruits this evening. What? Good. Darling, so good to see you. You fixed our water problem, didn't you? That's right. That's marvelous, darling. Simply marvelous. Here, you can... Mm -hmm. I'll ask Greeny to give you a discount. Right. Now I simply must get... Sweet. Now, I did miss out on an opportunity with uh, McCready here, and that McCready really likes it if you are always talking about rewards and trying to get rewards out of people. Uh, I just forgot. Otherwise, I would have done it. I'll drop off all my junk. Um, like, like, apart from weapons and stuff, which I'm going to leave be. And I'm going to swing back to Red Rocket, both to, uh, to report that I cleared out that settlement and to drop off the weapons. I'm starting to get most of the perks that I need to... Um, there's a scrapper perk that means that you get more stuff when you disassemble something. I cleared that place out for you. Should be safe for your friends to move in now. I'm amused that we didn't wait for this guy to wake up. Oh, nice to have some good news around here for a change. Okay. So that's the end of that quest. And, yeah, we're gonna drop off some stuff. And as usual, I'm gonna skip most of the wrangling over equipment for outside the video. Might do a quick bit of cooking. Particularly because, like in this case, you can get the uh, XP from cooking that you need to go up a level. Sweet. So we're going to drop off pretty much all the food, anything that we don't think that we're likely to use on the road. If you want to get your, you want to keep your weight down in the game, just kind of like in real life. Um, Jet is actually useful. It's the one med that you'll probably find yourself using a, a fair amount of over the game. Not that none of the other things have use, but Judd is actually broadly useful for a good range of situa uh, situations. And that's a neat fruit too, so I will probably end up swapping some of my... Uh, some, of, some of my existing crops out for that. Okay, 82 pounds, that is not at all bad. Okay. So let's see, what do we do with our level up? So we're not getting the gun yet. Uh, can't do hacker yet. Can't do the next level of scrapper yet. And those are kind of our priorities. 
I think we were thinking about doing science, which is also pretty nice, but I think, oh yeah, we can't, so next level we could do lockpick. Um, armor is pretty tempting, just because particularly early in the game, and then very, very late in the game, the armor that you have is super important to manage, but science is both good for settlements and it's good for, um, you know, I think, yeah, no, let's do science. I think it'll start to make a lot of sense with, uh, with the quest that we're, uh, going to be doing. So for, we were going to do Hubris Comics and then Mechanical Menace. Let's go do uh, uh, Hubix, Hub, Hubris Comics first. Now Hubris Comics, again, it's just a radiant, clear out this area quest for the Brotherhood, but you get very, very good experience from those. And unfortunately, one of them got locked, locked off in an area that we're not going to have access to for a while. I consider that to be, if it's not a bug, it's at least a pretty strong oversight. Oop. So we're back in an area. Earlier on, we... Oop. That is not something I like hearing. I think that's a rocket launcher. We're back in an area where, earlier on, we were having a lot of trouble surviving. Uh, just because our gear at that time was pretty awful. It's not actually that bad now. Shook up over so. But we're no longer here just for map purposes. Also, I think that this is just about listening to a distress call. which I guess we're probably a little bit too far away to actually hear anything from it. That is okay. Okay, so the task here is to clear out this area. If I remember correctly, this area is also... That's what it is. It's full of ghouls. Okay, we have listened to the distress uh, to the distress call. It's just we didn't actually hear it particularly well because I've turned off a lot of the audio in the game just to make the uh, that is super annoying. Yeah, but I've turned off most of the audio in the game just to make recording go smoother. Yep. Again, the Fallout dodging hell. is very different than it is in most other games, but it still works, and it's definitely worth learning how to do it right. Okay. Again, pre-war money, just useful for, um, just useful as cloth. So garbage. G R B A G E. Mastery could fit. There we go. Yeah. And this gives us Perfect. an axe. We're not, I've never really played a melee character, and so I've never really made much use of this. But... Let's see what is in here. Is there any foes in here? No. Good. little bit of in the way of supplies. Oh, and I say, okay, that works for me. I'm hoping that this won't be another place where it has impossibly large amounts of things and we can't loot it in one go. There is a perk that I always eventually get, uh, or it's a, a perk with several levels that makes it much easier to deal with being overburdened. 
but I tend to get it pretty late in the game. Because Fallout, it has such replay value that typically you can still be like level 100 something and have a good time just wandering uh, around having random adventures. Um, let's see. Jangles the Moon Monkey is actually pretty, uh... That smells absolutely terrible. Well, dead bodies generally do, and I imagine ghouls probably smell pretty terrible, too. Okay. Things... It would be interesting to imagine having structural engineers come into this landscape and guess exactly how nervous you should be about about wandering into buildings that have been uh, left this long alone and that are in the state that they're in. Because all the collapsed ceilings and stuff, they don't exactly give confidence for being in an area. Come on, just leave it. Okay. Creedy again. Very few com uh, companions actually appreciate you grabbing everything you can. They they won't disapprove to the level where you lose affinity with them, but they're continually going to kvetch about it. Yeah, I would love to see a structural engineer's Guys. take on all of this. Okay, you can hear something near... Ah, there we go. It is kind of essential to quickly shift to aim mode if you're gonna... Uh, Acredi, this is one, another thing that really annoys me uh, about the game, and that your companions can push you, and they have a far greater push power than you do. So usually, they, they occasionally will... Occasionally it's dangerous. It's always super annoying. Uh -oh. oh, okay. So let's get something better than... A, maybe a Molotov cocktail. See what we get. Troubleshooter's pistol. Oh, it's useful against robots. Well, it's better than nothing. If we have enough uh, stuff to get... See, usually these things, they're not... You're never hurt by an unuseful legendary. If you have enough materials to enhance that uh, up to the level of your best weapon of that class, usually by class I do, I'm just thinking about ammo. And that for any given ammo type, Bad vibes from this place. We shouldn't be For any given ammo type, usually I'll try to only have one weapon. And so I tend to think of uh, like a completely generic weapon, one which is not legendary in any way. Usually you, you can build any uh, any legendary weapon up to being it's equal plus whatever little benefit it has. So unless the benefit is completely useless, and there are a few, um, particularly like for the radiation weapons, uh, or I'm sorry, for the non-radiation, uh, or for the radiation weapons, if they're like, if they have a benefit that makes them more dangerous to ghouls, then they're, uh, that benefit is useless because ghouls don't take any damage from radiation. So there's no point in having that mod on uh, on that weapon, and you can just bas you basically should sell those because they, they're still worth more. For some reason, they're worth more, but uh, but yeah, they're just not useful in this in the normal sense. Well, oh, did not mean to do that. There might be a few things that I'm misremembering where, like, 
computer terminals unlock quests and stuff. And I'm probably going to miss out on that because I don't want to bore you guys uh, with you making me read terminals. Okay, so here we are. We are in a dangerous spot. This won't take long. Okay. So there's a glowing one back there, which is particularly un unfortunate to this deal. Okay. So again, fortunately, even being anywhere near a glowing one means you're you're going to take uh, radiation damage. Like it, it's it's not even an attack; it's just a built-in swap weapons. And we are going to see if we can shoot a leg off. Ooh, not great. Yeah, it's almost killed us. So we're gonna take a the wrong day to piss me off. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, the game really generally when you're asked to clear out an area it's, it doesn't require you to kill everything there it's more you're killing the boss monster for that place and usually it, it is one of the tougher foes and it's hidden away in an area that is not super easy to get to so often effectively you'll you'll need to clear the entire area but But you won't actually need to uh, kill everything there if you don't want the old silver shroud shows. I wish I could have seen them. So this is a pre-war, um, I guess, uh, comics. Uh, like they did filming of um, filming of uh, filming of media here. Uh, that is a useless perk if I've ever seen one. Do more damage with the Alien Blaster. The Alien Blaster, it is a unique weapon. It's hard to find. And you can't replace the uh, the ammo on it. Nice. I think that there might be some way to get around that. But still, it's just it's not a particularly impressive weapon. Nice. All right. So that okay. is well. That is uh, this place. Quite a lot of uh, random junk that we got. I've never really been super. I, I do try to be a little bit picky with um, gear that I pick up. And so usually that means that uh, that the junk uh, outweighs uh, the gear at least by a little bit. But yeah, this is basically a fantasy comic shop, which is kind of amusing in itself. And if you... If you're playing the game on your own, you'll find a kind of interesting story about office drama relating to the Silver Shroud, which is a pre-war comic character. Oh, and there is a person over there, I think, standing in the middle of the road. Maybe. Looks if like a person. Stay alive, we need to make for some cover. Okay. What is going on over here? Oh, no, these aren't people. These are mannequins set up to look like people. That Stop is it. a little bit annoying. But it's probably it's just noise. a trap. Okay, raiders. Let's go and find out where the raiders are. What? And Oh, there they are. Got him. 
but unfortunately I don't think it's particularly easy to get up in there, so... Oh, maybe it is. Yeah, radar armor, generally not worth picking up. Up we go. Oh, and this is one of the rare cases where a raider would, was living alone. Seems to be a pretty good place to uh, to be. The, the downside is that there's not a lot of cover. And you can imagine, like, somebody trying to go to sleep here, they would be right to be super nervous. Maybe here, like, sleeping in the very back. But again, in general, the... I think the world of Fallout 4 is a place where nobody could really sleep securely. So, we're going to head back to Night Reese to let her know that we cleared out this area for her. And to get some nice XP for it, which might push us up to level 18. Then we're going to swing by Red Rocket to drop off our stuff. And then I think we're going to start the line of quests uh, about robots. And basically, because I've turned off the radio station, this is somebody calling out because the, uh, their gang of traitors, I think, was attacked by a bunch of robots. Now, interestingly, I guess in, in the modern world, we're beyond the area where citizens often call out to other citizens for direct uh, help. And so as a result, we've lost a lot of our traditions of self-organizing uh, to deal with social problems. So, are you finished or what? Affirmative. That's what I like to hear. Plenty more locations out there that once you've prepped for your next... I'm ready. Good. Here's the data on the location. Don't come back until... Okay. So there's our next spot. Mast Pipe Tunnel, which is not a particularly difficult place to uh, to clear out. It's kind of fun, too. I think we might have found one end of it, maybe. So there's the caravan. Where is the Mast Pipe Tunnel? Okay, not quite, but we've at least gotten pretty near it. But again, we really need to uh, drop off our stuff in, uh, in Red Rocket. So, we're going to get near a workbench so that we can drop off our stuff. Hey, let's see what you got. Now, we, we learned last time that if we just grab everything from McCready, unfortunately his, his hat is grabbable. And I don't really... I think he looks good with the hat, so I'm not going to try and... Uh, I don't really want to take it away from him. Okay. So... All junk. Love that button. Don't really have a use for the axe. So we're probably not going to use it, at least with this companion. Maybe with another one. Okay, so for this, this sniper rifle does 40 damage. Our regular sniper rifle does... Where is it? 55 damage. Okay, so we're going to leave this be. has a better scope than our main sniper rifle, but doesn't do as much damage, and I usually... I care a lot about both, but... Oh yeah, and the Silver sh Shroud stuff, it is tied to a quest, so you actually can't put it down, which is pretty annoying. Um... Great Mentats 5 Charisma. That's actually quite nice. Since all the speech quests in the game, they depend on your charisma. Now you'll notice I I basically save every bit of uh, Nuka-Cola Quantum that I can. Down to 84 pounds. That's not bad. Okay. 
we're heading to the Consumer Electronics Store. And this is where the radio was asking us to uh, to help. But yeah, and in modern times, we've avoided a lot of this person-to-person -person help. And so we've lost this tradition for... Okay, this is not a particularly safe place. Now we've signed ourselves, signed ourselves up for some danger. There's quite a lot of danger. Okay, let's put that in the bell. Yeah, quite a lot of danger, and that these critters are not downscaled enough towards our health. Oh, red roach meat. I should have brought that off. To be uh, appropriate, really, for somebody of our level to fight. Oh. Okay, somebody accidentally blew up a... Uh, accidentally blew up a car and that killed most of our first floor. Sweet. We get some nice thing about these robots is that you get quite nice loot from them. Like in general, from now on we're gonna be facing some robot foes reasonably frequently. These are the traders, and it looks like we were too late. Although you're always too late, so there's really nothing you can actually do for them. Uh, but you can at least go and talk to the robot and see how badly things went. These guys, they typically have some decent uh, food on them. So some other robots, some food. Quite a lot of uh, loot that's a little bit on the rare side. And now... My friends did not survive the attack. Thank you for a... Are you okay? Physically, the damage is minor. It may sound strange coming... Again, I thank you for... I'm sorry. My name is Ada. Even with the weapon and detection... Mm -hmm. Who's Jackson? Jackson was the leader of this caravan. Mm -hmm. He installed all my current... Tell me about these... They roam the common... Settlers. Mm -hmm. We knew we ran the... You couldn't have known. The probability of attack and recompense. I will. It's time to uncover the. You'll need help. I'm again. aware of this. You have shown willingness. In return. Uh huh. You want. I admit my goal is to. Uh -huh. I won't rest until I see this threat dissolve. Now we last saw. You may find information. I will follow and. Okay, so here you can switch companions. And I'm yeah. actually going to do that. Let's go, Ada. General Atomics has been... And I'm going to send McCready back to Red Rocket. And, uh, and go with Ada. Now, the, Ada is an interesting companion in that she... You can't actually get uh, at the kind of benefits uh, from pairing up with her that you can get with... Uh, with most. That's a museum quality piece. Oh, that's a little cold. I just got that from, uh, from our companions. But anyhow, so you, you don't get any uh, perk 
from maxing out affinity with her, because like Dogmate, she doesn't have a notion of affinity. But she's quite a powerful uh, companion. And she wants you to go to General Atomics, which is quite far. We have a bit of a hike to make it there. So on our way there, we still are doing decent when it comes to uh, weight. So we're probably not going to actually make it to the uh, all the way to the factory in this Let's Play, because we're getting kind of near the end of the... Uh, the end of the length that I like to have these videos. This is already a little bit longer than I usually uh, like to have these run. But we're at least going to try and get closer map-wise. I think this is a place where one of the Diamond City guards goes. Yep. Because again, Diamond City, they're big enough that it's making sense for them to uh, start expanding their territory beyond... beyond just the city itself. So you could imagine probably just maybe a, a few centuries, or actually maybe not centuries, a few decades after this game, by that time uh, Diamond City might control a sizable chunk of the land surrounding the city itself, which is healthy. This is basically the, the story of the foundation of a state. Ah, that is nice. It's filling up our... Sweet. That worked very nicely. I've never fi fired a real gun or held a real gun. The closest I've ever come is a potato cannon. But I wonder if, if that's what, uh, what sniping is sometimes like. Okay, so there is another robot. It's a hostile robot. Oh, shoot. Oh, and these are raiders. Okay. But I was hoping it was a settler that I was rescuing, but it turns out it was a raider. But that is okay. Okay, got another level up. I think so we can't do another hacker, but there was something else we were looking into. We were thinking about science. We were also... Okay, Locksmith. This lets us unlock Master Locks. And it's the final level that we ever take. So basically, all of all locks right now are, are things that we can handle. I think we might have gone overweight. Nope, we were just crouched. Also, every foe that you... Every robot foe that you collect now, you can weld their, their pieces onto Ada. And you're really going to want to do this. Uh, because Ada, by default, she is slow and pretty useless. I mean, any companion is helpful in drawing fire for you, but some companions actually can do, do some damage. And it is helpful. Oops. Yeah, some trouble. You can just see that she just cobbles along. Not particularly helpful. Yeah, drawing damage is great, but she's even too slow to really... Or, I mean, drawing fire, but she's even too slow to get the attention of, of most foes that you, uh, you might be facing. Okay, so let's see. Can I slip up this thing? I can, I can probably get a nice vantage for taking out these guys. Since they will not be expecting attacks from here. I'm not sure if I'm well enough hidden. Okay. Well, maybe she is drawing a little bit of fire. Not a lot. Because again, she's just too slow. 
but a little bit. Yeah. Definitely, I I should also be trying to, to get some levels in the uh, stealth-oriented skills. Okay. I saw somebody over there. And somebody stupid. Oh, okay, they were able to toss a grenade, but they were not precise enough to actually hit me. This is just a comedy of errors. There we go. Sweet. Still, this is not going super well. Let's see. Oh, somebody just over there. Time to switch to some close combat weaponry for some close combat. Sweet. Yeah, usually just a nice. Again, if, if somebody, if a weapon has enough mods on it, and even if it's a type of weapon that I wouldn't or ordinarily like to pick up, I will grab it, but, but ordinary type weapons, no way. Oh, for fuck's sake. It's annoying when bats is a whole lot worse than you are. Guaranteed hit. And it does enough to kill. Good. There we go. This this actually gives us the map marker for the quest. Which is great. I believe that that is really what we should be aiming for here. Since that means next time in our next uh episode, we can come back and quickly take care of this. Yeah, the game uses a lot of mannequins, and they... I guess a mannequin actually probably would make sense. Lots of mannequins would make sense to, uh, to have in the apocalypse to distract people who are trying to, uh, to, uh, to kill you. This is another red rocket. Looks significantly, but not entirely like uh, our settlement one. It is smaller. It doesn't have the attached uh, garage in the rear. And it's in a highly trafficked area. But it is still... Oh, looks like Ada can run quickly when she needs to. That is good. And a power armor station. Now this is a weird thing to have outside. Unless these places were used for military stuff as well as uh, used for military as well as civilian use. I believe that this will open up another quest, so I'm going to turn on the Trinity radio station just to let it play and see if it, see if it opens up that quest. I can't hear it because I have turned off the audio for uh, for that for purposes of the let's play. But at least I think that this might, yeah, curtain call. So that opens up another quest. So those are the three things that we're going to be doing in our next Let's Play. But for now, I'm going to head back to Red Rocket and um, drop off my stuff and probably upgrade Ada uh, a bit because, again, she's kind of not...
particularly useful in this configuration. And the neat thing about robots, I guess I'll show you this bit. Neat thing about robots is you can build a robot workbench. Uh, where will I build it? Um, I was imagining building it. Actually, use those a lot more than I do power armor stuff. But I still sometimes do power armor stuff. I think this is maybe enough room. Let's see. Uh, not quite. I might have to build the workbench here. Well, that's kind of funny. I'll build it near the bathroom. But yeah, you can attach all sorts of things to them. They're the most customizable companions that you can get. One thing I definitely want to do is switch her to a thruster. Because even though it means that she'll be able to carry less, her default legs are just uselessly slow. This is like the most useful thing I think uh, that you can do with Ava. Um, switch her to a, uh, from her ordinary super, super slow legs to a thruster. Uh, I might do an Assaultron tank. Anyhow, uh, you will see what I've done, uh, because I will show it to you in the next uh, Let's Play. Uh, let's also quickly... Do you have anything to say to me? No. And are there any potential attackers from over here? No. Okay. Always worth checking with Red Rocket. Uh, because that is a spawn point. Whoa. Uh oh. Oh, there are. Yeah, that, that's a spawn point for uh, for foes. Now you can see that she's already much, much faster than she has. Oops. And Ada is killed, and I'm almost dead. Oh, wow, that is very, very precise timing. Anyhow, I really don't want to ever leave you guys without seeing some combat that I did, so I'm going to head back to Red Rocket and hopefully do it right this time. I don't remember, did I scoop up anything here that I didn't before? No, that must have been where I fast traveled from. Okay, back to Red Rocket. I'm not sure if it's going to be a robot attack again, but if it ends up being uh, so, then I'm going to do my best to survive it this time, and hopefully get some good stuff to attach to Ada. Okay, so we're going to swing by here, build a robot workbench, modify Ada to have Thruster. I think I'll leave, leave it like that for now. Oh yeah, these are also... Like any other... You can drop off. Yeah, I don't see anybody right now. Okay, there are some people over there. It's not quite the same as as it was, but these guys usually have robots too. Be 
careful about our health. they've gotten close enough that we're getting some nice effects from having our settlement nearby. But they're not quite close enough to really Dogmeat took care of that. So, our, did we actually get any gear with, with this different spawn of, of uh, foes? I don't think we did, which is unfortunate. Because, again, it's with Ada, particularly early on, I'm not going to be able to construct the, the nice, most of the nicer gear that you might want to give her. So you just kind of have to loot it off of uh, robots that you defeat. But that's okay. I did not die this time, and that is probably more important. Dogmate is moseying around. Okay, so that is the end of this uh, this episode, episode nine, and for episode ten, as I said before, we're going to be invest. Uh, we might investigate the radio broadcast. That's a kind of dangerous quest. Uh, and actually it'll involve a, yeah, we'll hold off on that, but we'll go, uh, take a look at the General Atomics Factory, which is also quite dangerous, but it's fun and it'll help us upgrade Ada uh, even further. And we're going to be clearing out Mass Pipe Tunnel, which is also pretty, uh, pretty useful. We might do this some, a uh, little bit of the Silver Shroud stuff, just so that we can drop off, uh, drop off some of uh, some of this heavy, goofy Silver Shroud uh, ammo. But that's it. Um, you will see, uh, if you're following these, you'll see this stuff next time.